kind of kind of wild that that we're doing. I told you this is basic theology 101, and and starting in two weeks, I'm gonna be doing theology 404 <laughs> uh, at school. So uh, uh, praise God. I told myself I've had so many theology courses. I don't know why one of them couldn't count for this course. And, and they just have they just have it so fixed that one little thing can fix it. So that I've already had about four theology courses in college, and now I come with another. I mean, I'm taking two semester classes. It's two semesters to get through the class, and, and then hop up with another one. I just I'm not going to argue. I've already tried to argue with them. All they did was make things worse. And, and, and was and really, what has changed in theology? Of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When Linda was in the doctor's office, they were in green. Another lady was hit inside of him. She said, I'll tell you one thing. If I know that bothers you like that, that woman thing she does, I'd get me something and I'd be well. And a woman that sat inside of me on the other side, she said, Well, I'm a professor at East Carolina College and I teach biology. <laughs> <laughs> that that hurts both of us, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like uh, I was talking to somebody the other day, somewhere, somehow, something came up, and they were talking about God or something. I don't know exactly how it came up, and they asked me something what I think, and I told them what I was thinking. Looked at me kind of weird. I was at the hospital. And I said, "Well, I'm a pastor." And they went, "Oh, okay." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We want to hear what you got to say. All right. Okay. So we were talking about the characteristics of each member of the Trinity. And, and, of course, in Hebrews 11, 6, without faith it's impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Now, we've been talking about the four ways by which God reveals himself, and it was in creation and, and uh, uh, communication, also uh, in your conscience. And now here we've talked about through his word, and now we're talking about through Christ. And so if God is truly noble, and he is, the question we need to ask is how can we come how can we come to him? Christ is, or God has revealed him facts about himself, his nature in different ways so that we can know him. Well, what are these ways? Of course, now we're going to talk about through Christ. This is the finished product of last week. So last week we talked about God's word and how God communicated. Now we're going to talk about the living word. We're talking about the written word. Uh, uh, now we're going to talk we're talking about the logos. And now we're going to talk about the living word. So here we go. In the beginning was the Word. Y'all can, if you're writing, writing paper, put it up over top. Present. Present. He's all power. I mean, he's, all, he's omnipresent. Okay, this is his God and the Godhead. Okay, he's omnipresent. Okay. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and now you can put omnipotent. He's all powerful because he's just, he's God. Not like God, he is God. So he's omnipresent, he was there. He's omnipotent because he was with God. And all, all through him all things were made, and without him were not anything made. And him was life, and the life was the life of men. So now you can put omniscient. Again, we're talking about we're talking about the attributes of, 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 of deity. He's omnipresent, he's there, all places at one time. He was in the beginning, he's here with us now. He's omnipotent because not only is he with God, he is God. And uh, all things are made by him. Again, it's omnipotence. But then you see in him was life, and life was, was the light of men. So now he's uh, omniscient becoming, because now he knows all things. And it says, uh, he came to testify concerning, I see what time John the Baptist now he came concerning that he was of the light, but he was not the light. The true light gives man this. So Jesus was in the world, the world received him not, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, and his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or of a husband's will, but born of God. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And in that, and we've seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. And in just that one sentence, again, you've got omnipresence, omnipotence, and omniscience. He's all-knowing, all-powerful, and all-present everywhere. And so this is powerful. Jesus Christ is just so powerful. And that's one of the reasons why when you talk about God, 
There's so many gods in this world. Every religion has a god, little g. Mm -hmm. Every religion. Even the atheists have a little g god. So you don't really aggravate people too much when you say God. It doesn't really cause a whole lot of, doesn't put a lot of bees in the bottom. But when you start saying Jesus, that's when the problem comes. I, I remember one day, the Lord was trying to get into my head about the power of his name. And I remember uh, I had quit smoking and I quit running around being wild. Man. And I was trying to be home, trying to, use, I was trying to be a good guy. And uh, Beverly, I believe, was pregnant with D.C. at the time. And I was laying in bed on the third shift one night. I woke up in the morning. I was dreaming in the middle of the night that I was doing all the things that I had let the Lord deliver me from. Mm -hmm. I was doing it all. And I said, Lord, I, I don't want this. And so I, I just... Kept going, going to the bathroom, come back, and I dream again. I was doing things that just I knew I shouldn't be doing in my dream, and I come back and I wake up and say, God, you gotta help me. And then I went back to sleep. And this was this was literally not just a dream, it was so real, it was like a vision. It was like I was right there. You seen those kind of dreams? I was right there. And I stood out in the front yard and I said, Okay, Satan, I've had enough of you. Let's have it out now. And when I said, let's have it out now, and I was asleep, and I was in my dream, it took my breath, he picked me up over my house. And I just started going around and around and around my house. He was just fighting me. And I couldn't do anything. Because I, I was the one that challenged him. And so I went to challenge him. That was a silly thing, me to challenge him. <laughs> but when I challenged him, the Lord was teaching me something. When he went to challenge, when he challenged him, he pulled me up, and, he, and he's had me in the air and he was taking my breath and I was going around and around and around. And I remembered in a revival just a week or so before, a preacher said, when, you, when you're under attack, just quote the word of God. Just quote the word of God. You can fight it. Especially quote what's going on. Quote the, 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 the antidote. Well, when you're going around the house at about 50 to 100 miles an hour, <laughs> you're in the air and there's nothing you're holding on to and this guy at you and you're like this, you can't breathe. You, I couldn't think of a Bible verse. I was thinking, wait a minute, I still think of a Bible verse. Bible verse, I can't think of a Bible verse. I just started reading the Bible. I don't understand. I can't. And the Lord spoke to me in this dream and said, and Jesus said, just say my name. And so I said, I couldn't even breathe. And I still remember this like it happened last night. Jesus. And I started slowing down. And I said, J -j Jesus. And pretty soon I'm going, Jesus, 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 Jesus. And I slowed right on down. It took me right to where I was pulled up in the air. And I sat right down on my feet. And I sat down softly on my feet. And I heard a voice behind me say, you have defeated him. All I said was Jesus. And then tell Bible verses, which I still use Bible verses when I'm in spiritual warfare, especially now that I know them. But to somebody who does not know the verses, and there's still times where I don't have anything to say but Jesus. But because I did that, I went and told a boss man who was one of my spiritual uh, shepherds. I told him, huh, he must not have heard the part about the being a dream. Because <laughs> he said, we're good friends. Why didn't you tell me about this when you first got here? I said, no, it was a dream. <laughs> but, but the point of the matter was, God taught me in that dream that night. Because from that time on, and at the time I was, I was also trying to quit smoking. And so I had this stuff going on and how this battle's going on. And, and uh, God showed me his power through just the name of Jesus. Just the name of Jesus. Again, it was a dream. But, uh, but other than it was a dream, I, I wouldn't be a bit surprised to think it was almost a, a vision because it was so real. I mean, when, 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 I, when I woke up, I was sweating. I was breathing hard. You know, it was like I've been running around the yard. So, so again, the name of Jesus is so powerful. That's why you watch TV and talk about God. Oh, you ought to talk about God. You can go to school and talk about God. But when you say Jesus, you can say Muhammad. I don't get goosebumps. You can say Confucius. I just say Gazoom type. 
<laughs> when you say Jesus, that's a powerful name. Man, that's a powerful name. Amen? It's a very powerful name. So, uh, matter of fact, you ever tell y'all about the sign? Saw a sign, a billboard said, Need a lift. It was advertised in a tow truck. It says, uh, You need a lift? It said, Call 1 800 Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus had a lift truck, I mean, had a tow truck. <laughs> Need a lift of life called Jesus. <laughs> okay, so here, this is so simple. And it, this is the whole story. This is the story of the gospel. In the beginning was the Word. Before there was ever anything, before we were ever created, there was a, according to Revelation, there was a divine meeting before the world was ever created. And God said, there's going to be a fall. Now, how are we going to take care of this? We've got to have somebody innocent die for the guilty. And the Bible says in, in, in Revelation that he was, it was the lamb slain From before, the 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 before the foundation of the earth, of the world. So now, what that's saying is, is although it had not happened yet, God knew it was going to happen because he's omniscient. And so because he knew it was going to happen, then Jesus, Calvary wasn't an afterthought. It was a forethought. It was already there. And when God says something, that's what I like about God's promises. If you can think about this, if God gives you a promise, and you know God gave it to you, hold on to it, because although you don't see it yet, it's good as done because if God ever says something, it's done. Remember I told you, if God told you that this thing here was made out of mahogany, and you go, come on now, I've been watching the pastor, it's made out of metal. And if he says that, if he said it was mahogany, you try and look at me mahogany. Why? Because once God says something, it happens. And so when God gives you a promise, it happens. And so God gave the promise that his son was going to be slain, uh, and it's gonna, it's gonna, it actually happened 2,000 years ago before the very beginning of time. God had already figured it out. They already had the divine counsel. And Jesus, they said, I'll go. And so although he had not physically done it, it was already put down in the books. So it's going to happen. So if God says he's going to heal you, you know he's going to heal you. And he says, I'm going to heal you so you can get up and walk again. Guess what? I may feel bad, but I won't be walking because God's going to heal me. And, and, and I can think about it saying, like, Linda, you've been sick, and your heart, the problem with the heart is how God pulled you back up out of all of that. You know, uh, uh, and all y'all got, got stories to tell about that, about how God healed you, or how God healed your spouses, or some things that he did. And, and, and but so when God says it, it's good as done. 